Welcome to the Happy Hormones Coach Podcast, your go-to source for all things women's health. I'm here to guide you through the ups and downs of hormonal changes, helping you understand how these shifts impact every aspect of your life. So whether you're in the perimenopause phase or really any other phase of life, looking to improve your overall well-being or just seeking practical tips on stress management, nutrition and fitness, then this podcast is for you. Join me as we explore holistic and functional approaches to health, share expert insights from guests, and empower you to feel your best at every stage of life. Before we dive into today's episode, I want to remind you that the information shared in this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any medical condition. Always consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health regimen. Hey, welcome back to the Happy Hormones Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer, and today we're diving into how bad is perimenopausal depression really, plus how to lift your mood naturally. We're going to break down the science behind perimenopausal depression, why it happens, and most importantly, what can you do about it? So let's get started. So let's talk about uh, perimenopausal depression. First of all, what exactly is it? Is it a thing? I mean, isn't depression just depression? Well, perimenopausal depression is a specific type of depression that can occur during this phase or transition, um, which is the period leading up to menopause. And this transition can last several years, actually, and it's marked by significant hormonal changes that can have a profound impact on both your physical and mental health. And to really understand why perimenopausal depression happens, we need to get into the nitty gritty of your hormones and brain chemistry. So this might be fun for you if you're like me and you like to geek out, but if not, well, at least you'll get some information as to understanding the why behind it. One of the primary hormones involved here is estrogen. Estrogen isn't just responsible for regulating your menstrual cycle. It also has a significant impact on your brain, particularly in how it interacts with neurotransmitters, um, the chemical messengers that transmit signals to your brain. And one of the most important neurotransmitters affected by estrogen is serotonin. Serotonin is often called the happy hormone because it plays a crucial role in regulating your mood, anxiety, and overall emotional well-being. It helps stabilize your mood, promotes feelings of happiness, um, and it even helps regulate your sleep-wake cycle. During perimenopause, your estrogen levels can fluctuate wildly. Sometimes they drop significantly, and most times they do, and other times they might surge. And these fluctuations can lead to a decrease in serotonin production, which in turn can trigger symptoms of depression, anxiety, and mood swings. So it's not just estrogen that's kind of in this flux state. Progesterone, which is another key hormone, also plays a role. Progesterone is known for its calming effects on the brain because it enhances the activity of GABA, G-A-B-A. A neurotransmitter that acts as your brain's natural tranquilizer, basically. And GABA helps calm the nervous system and promotes relaxation. During perimenopause, progesterone levels also decline, which can lead to reduced GABA activity. And this reduction can make you feel more anxious, irritable, and restless, further contributing to the signs or symptoms of depression. Now, estrogen also influences dopamine and norepinephrine norepinephrine, two trans- neurotransmitters that are crucial for, re- for regulating mood, motivation, and energy levels. Dopamine is involved in the brain's reward system. It's what makes you feel pleasure and satisfaction from activities that you enjoy, kind of like habits, right? That loop reward system. So the um, norepinephrine, on the other hand, is involved in your body's fight or flight, response and helps regulate stress. So when estrogen levels drop, it can lead to a decrease in both dopamine and norepinephrine. I can never pronounce that, (laughs) which might explain why you might feel less motivated, less joyful, and more stressed when you hit the perimenopause phase. And let's not 
forget about cortisol, which is the, pri- the body's primary stress hormone. During perimenopause, the fluctuating levels of estrogen and progesterone can lead to increased cortisol production. Chronically elevated cortisol levels can just significantly exasperate feelings of anxiety and depression, and it definitely disrupts your sleep, which further, as we know, from lack of sleep, if you've ever had it, which I'm sure you have, it, ha- it affects your mood. So in summary, perimenopausal depression is not just about feeling a little down. It's actually the result of very complex biochemical changes in your brain caused by those pesky hormone levels that are fluctuating. So these changes also affect how your brain processes mood, stress, and emotional well-being. But now that we've got a better understanding of what's going on in our brains during perimenopause, I really want to emphasize the importance of therapy. Therapy isn't just for, you know, when you're feeling at your lowest. It's a proactive tool that can help you navigate these changes with more clarity and support. I've started therapy myself, and uh, it's something I should have done years and years ago, and it's been an incredibly helpful experience, actually. It's given me a safe space to process what's happening and has provided me with tools to manage my mental health more effectively. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, please don't hesitate to reach out to a counselor or therapist. And remember, we're, we're about to, what we're about to discuss, um, you know, holistic natural ways to lift your mood there are tools but these are tools that you can use alongside professional help Um, there's really no replacements for actual therapy or counseling or you know even a good friend that you trust that you can talk to so let's dive into some actionable steps that you can take to naturally lift your mood during this transition Um, move your body let's start with exercise Exercise is one of the most powerful ways to boost your mood, and there is a scientific reason for it, of course. Physical activity stimulates the production of um, endorphins, which are your body's natural painkillers, and mood elevators. But exercise doesn't just boost endorphins, it also increases the production of other neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. Remember when we talked about that earlier? So exercise is is a fantastic way to naturally increase its levels in your brain. Even moderate exercise, like a 20 to 30 minute brisk walk, um, cycling or stretching can have a significant impact on your mood. The key is to find something that you enjoy, even dancing, in the kitchen, cleaning, whatever that looks like to you, and make it a regular part of your routine. Consistency is crucial because regular physical activity helps stabilize your hormone levels and improves your brain's ability to regulate your mood. So next up, let's talk about nutrition. What you eat directly impacts your brain chemistry and mood. Focus on foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids such as salmon, walnuts, flax seeds, Um, Omega-3s are essential for brain health because they help build and repair our brain cells and reduce inflammation, which obviously affects our mood. Leafy greens like spinach and kale are also important because they contain folate, a um, B vitamin crucial for serotonin production. And low levels of folate have been linked to depression, so make sure that you're getting enough through your diet for sure. Um, Additionally, magnesium-rich foods like Uh, nuts, seeds, and dark chocolate can help calm the nervous system and support brain a healthy brain function. And don't forget about the gut-brain connection. Um, Your gut produces many of the same neurotransmitters as your brain, including serotonin, and a healthy gut means a happier brain. So incorporate probiotics if needed, although that's not one I would start with. But you can also get it through fermented foods like yogurt, kefir, and there are non-dairy options um, as well for either of those. And uh, like miso and sauerkraut into your diet, and that supports a healthy gut. And sleep is another essential factor in managing your mood. Um, During this phase, sleep disturbances are common due to all the hormonal fluctuations. But getting enough quality sleep is vital for your mental health. Sleep is when your brain clears out toxins and consolidates memories, which is crucial for emotional regulation. And to improve your sleep, establish a regular sleep schedule, which you'll hear me frequently talk about, like a bedtime or wind down schedule, and um, create that routine and, and just kind of make it a habit. 
And this might include activities like taking a warm bath or a warm shower, um, practicing some gentle stretching, um, relaxing with the book instead of a TV, anything like that. And if you're having trouble falling asleep, you can consider natural supplements like magnesium um, that does help or herbal teas uh, like chamomile. And that can promote like, you know, relaxation before you you go to sleep. And mindfulness and meditation are powerful tools for managing stress and improving our mood. Uh, These practices help you focus on the present moment, um, reducing the tendency to dwell on negative thoughts, which is often a key factor um, in depression. And mindfulness practices increase the production of serotonin and other feel-good neurotransmitters, while also reducing cortisol levels. Even a short daily meditation, like five to 10 minutes, can have a big impact. You don't need to be a meditation expert at all to benefit. Just simple breathing exercises or guided meditations through apps like Calm, I have that app, or Abide, um, if you're a Christian, I have that app as well. Um, Or even Insight Timer can help you get started. And just connect with others. Social connection is a critical aspect of mental health. Human beings are wired for connection and interacting with others. Um, It can help you release oxytocin, which is a hormone that promotes feelings of, it's like a bonding hormone, um, promotes feelings of trust and comfort. During perimenopause, it's common to feel isolated, especially if you're dealing with mood swings or depression, but staying connected can help lift your spirits. Like I said, have a healthy Um, trusted friend or a circle of friends that you can talk with regularly and connect with and make an an effort to reach out to them Um, or even join a community group uh, for perimenopausal women. So whether it's a simple chat over a coffee, a walk or anything, even online, I have wonderful online groups that I absolutely love. Um, these interactions can provide much needed emotional support and, and it reduces feeling lonely. You know, even if you don't have anything in person, online is still wonderful. As long as you have that connection, um, it's, it's never good just to be alone. And lastly, make time for activities that bring you joy. I mean, true, genuine joy. Engaging in hobbies or activities that you love, that you enjoy, can increase dopamine levels, which, as we discussed earlier, is crucial for feeling pleasure and satisfaction. So whether it's painting, which I like to do, I am not good at, but I I absolutely love it. It's like relaxing to me. Um, Gardening, cooking, or even just listening to your favorite music, the key is to prioritize these activities that make you happy each day. So just regularly engage in joyful activities. Um, that can help counterbalance the stress and emotional challenges that come with just being in perimenopause, but also that come with your day-to-day lives. And it helps you build resilience and maintain a positive outlook. So again, I'm just going to kind of briefly go over those tips. Move your body. Exercise to boost endorphins, um, serotonin, and dopamine. Nourish your body. So eat foods rich in omega-3s, folate, and magnesium. Um, anything that supports your gut health. Prioritize sleep, establish a regular sleep routine to support emotional regulation, and practice mindfulness. Use meditation um, to manage stress and improve your mood. Connect with others, stay socially connected to boost that oxytocin or bonding hormone, and, you know, reduces loneliness. Engage in joyful activities. Prioritize activities that bring you happiness, something that you love, whatever it is. Bring out that inner child. We really, really can't forget that inner child that we have within us all. And these are all simple, actionable steps that you can take today to help you manage your mood during this transition. But remember, if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's okay to seek help. Therapy is a valuable resource for everyone, and it's a sign of strength to take care of your mental health. Definitely not weakness. That's it for today's episode. I hope you found this information helpful and even empowering just to learn a little bit more and you can take control. Start to take control of your health and your moods. Um, If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend who might benefit from this information. Um, And don't forget, we have trying to do two episodes a week. So stay tuned um, for that. 
And until next time, keep those hormones happy. That's what I'm here for. Stay fabulous. And remember, you are stronger than you think. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Happy Hormones Coach podcast. I hope you found today's episode insightful and empowering. Remember, taking charge of your health is a journey, and I'm here to support you every step of the way. If you enjoyed this episode or any of the other episodes, please be sure to share, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It does help me to reach more women like you who are striving for optimal health and happiness. And don't forget to follow me on social media for daily tips and inspiration. Until next time, stay healthy, stay happy, and keep thriving.